teacher unions, NAGRAT, NAT, TEU, and the Coalition of Consent Teachers are demanding government abrogates a World Bank funded project which they say will privatize and commercialize basic schools across the country. The Ghana Partnership for Education project is expected to take off in over 100 schools in the Ashanti, Northern, Central, and Greater Accra regions in September this year. Now, as part of efforts to improve education, we are told that this project is to do that. But NAGRAD President Angel Kabonu tells John you certain aspects of the policy empower the private operator to decide if they want to work with Ghana Education Service staff and heads of schools. I've been joined by the PRO of the Ministry of Education, Mr. Vincent Asefa, for some clarity on this. Thank you so much for your time this morning, sir. Good morning, Bennett. How are you? I'm great. Great to have you here. First off, help us understand exactly what this Ghana Partnerships for Education project is. Um, let me say a very good morning to your cherished um, viewers and listeners. Um, Bennett, we need to situate the conversation into a certain perspective. There are a number of reforms that have been introduced and initiated by the Ministry of Education. Um, key among them is what the President even spoke about when he visited Parliament last week on the State of the Nation Address on curriculum reforms. Again, you also remember that um, last year the same President also announced that there is an upgrade of the colleges of education to the university colleges. Again, you also remember that as part of the professionalization of the teaching profession, last year you also introduced the licensure exam in accordance with the Education Act of 2008. That stipulates clearly that all teachers in this country will have to be professionalized. I'm saying all this that we have a problem as a nation, and that problem is that we need to improve on the learning outcome because you have four learning outcomes in our basic schools. We can only do so, or we can only resolve that if and only if we deal with a number of things. It is not only one thing, or it's not one thing that can deal with that challenge of the poor learning outcomes in this country. And for that matter, it's little of things, the circle of uh, the scheme of things that will be able to deal with those things. And the GPS is part of that particular reform. Now, there's something we call the Ghana Accountability for Learning Outcome Project. That is the World Bank funded project that is going to about 7,000 schools. Number one, Gallup is giving learning grants to these 7,000 schools. It is also going to train teachers, providing manuals, PLMs, to be able to, as it were, equip our teachers to deliver on this mandate. Now, out of the Gallup, it's something that we call the GPS, so it's almost like a subset of Gallup. And that GPS is supposed to go to only 50 schools. Only 50 schools, I want to emphasize that. And out of that 7,000, that 50 schools that the GPS is going to, we are seeding an aspect of its managerial skills or as it were, its management to that particular non state not for profit entity to manage the school. We live in a country whereby for quite a number of years we know how a head teacher qualifies to be a head teacher. A head teacher becomes a head teacher by virtue of the fact that he has risen through the ranks to become an assistant director or a deputy director. Keeping in mind that the person might not have a leadership skill, might not be equipped with management, uh, management skills to be able to, as it were, manage the school like a corporate entity. And that has been one of the things that we go to or we have seen in our various basic school. The reason we have that poor learning outcome. And so we decided that we would be able to, as it were, manage this school in a way that you can bring that to us as well improve. All right, Mr. Uh, Sefa, if I get you right, these heads of schools lack a certain skill, and this skill is going to be provided by these non-for-profit entities or um, people representing these non-for-profit entities. But why not consider giving the teachers these skills that these persons have instead of giving part of the management of the schools to them? Bennett, that is why I earlier mentioned that there has been an upgrade of the College of Education to University College, and as part of this curriculum, we have introduced what we call leadership and counseling. Mm -hmm. So we want to deal with it at the minimum barest level. I mean, where you 
so that our teachers are being trained to become a teacher. So if you now go through that training, it means that when you go through the ranks to become a head teacher, you are now able to access well manage the school. So we want to tackle it from a number of points or a number of levels so that holistically we will be able to improve on the learning outcome. So the point is that it is not all head teachers who lack leadership skills, but we are saying that quite a number of the schools, that is about 50 of them that we are feeding to the non-state or non-profit entities, will be able to assist in making sure that we manage the schools to better our schools. Mr. I say for these 50 schools, uh, do you have a fair idea where they are located, which parts of the country they are? Venice. One of the things that we should know is that we are still at the planning level. Stakeholder engagement still going. I can assure you that even as we speak, there is no cabinet memo or, as it were, a ministry of education memo going to cabinet from cabinet to approve or otherwise. So we have not even gotten to a level whereby we can pinpoint to the schools. Some proposals might have been made, but it is not possible for us to put them out when we have not been able to, as it were, know that these are the real schools or the schools that we are going to use for that GPA. Mm. So when it, what went into determining the number of beneficiaries for this particular uh, project? What went into deciding these 50 schools if you are only at the planning stage? Well, it's just ability to pay by the World Bank. Um, the World Bank is able or is in the capacity to deal with 50 schools at the moment. And that 50 schools will have to be chosen based on their peculiar challenges that they face, number one how they have been performing in the BEC uh, examination, if you like. Um, researches are being done, that is the researches that were done when we went to the school. We realized some few challenges in the school. So, I mean, those are that's some of the things that we are going to base on to choose the 50 schools that we intend to use for the GPS. Okay. So, if I get you from your entire submission, you are not disagreeing with these four teacher unions, is it? with their concern about staff of the Ghana Education Service being sidelined in some instance. It's going to happen just that you're disputing the 100 schools that they, they state. That is number one. Number two, we are also not going to, as it were, dismiss teachers as they start to claim. Teachers who work in these schools are going to be the same teachers that are going to be teaching in those schools. Number two, head teachers who are in those schools are still going to be the same head teachers. It is not the case that it is going to be the prerogative of the non-state, not-for-profit entity who are going to be in the school to say that I am able or I am willing to work with this particular head teacher or not. No. It is only in instances whereby a teacher fails to as it were, the start is the way it is supposed to be. Um, the start is the For example, if a teacher is supposed to be in school or in class from 7.30 to 10 o'clock to go and teach a particular subject and that teacher fails to be in school, of course, it means that you are going to have a problem with the, the entity. But if you are discharging your duties the way you are supposed to be used, um, discharging your duties, there is no cause for alarm. If a teacher goes to class and is not supposed to be drunk, and you go to class drunk, and you are not able to as it were, deliver on your mandate the way you are supposed to deliver on your mandate, of course, you are going to have a problem with, with, with the entity. But if you are discharging your duties the way you are supposed to be discharging, as you are preparing your um, let me know the one of you. There is no cause for alarm. And so I can say that all the Wula balloon that is being put in the airways by the teacher unions is just mere exaggeration, use mm. of words of commoditization, the one of you know. Our schools are not sold, our schools are not going to be privatized. These are all exaggeration and punishment of words that we should ignore them. You mentioned earlier that there were, there are stakeholder engagements happening at the moment. Are these teacher unions a part of these engagements? Absolutely. I can tell you for a fact that there have already been an um, already stakeholder engagement with teacher unions were part. And in this futuristic purpose to on the eighth of March there is also another engagement that is supposed to be held and the teacher unions are part. You remember when the president mentioned that there is going to be an introduction of a new curriculum at the basic level, we had the government coming out to say that and it's still well. Hello, hello, Mr. Seifo. Sorry to cut in, but we are losing you on the line there. It's a bit unclear what you're saying. Could you please okay repeat? Now? Is it okay now? It's better now, sir. 
So what I'm saying is that you remember last week when the president spoke about the introduction of the curriculum reform at the basic level. The vice president of Ghana, Jacob Anaba, on your station, told the people of Ghana that they were not engaged or they were not consulted. Mm -hmm. But it came out clear that even the president of Naga and other three members, Harriet uh, or Henrietta, who is also a financial person for Naga and other two members, were part of the negotiations. Um, uh, uh, let, uh, let, uh, let, uh, let, me, let me mention that I interviewed the president of Naga, Mr. Andrew Kabonu, and he agrees with his deputy. He actually asked if informing a group of people about a decision that has been taken already will pass for stakeholder engagement. In other words, he was saying he was just informed. He was not engaged in the initial process. But let's move on from there quickly. Talking about the president's State of the Nation address and mentioning that there's going to be a new curriculum for kindergarten to primary six uh, levels, he also mentioned that the senior high school level will now be considered a basic level. So with this new reform you are talking about, um, the not-for-profit entity supporting basic schools, are we also looking at um, what we now call senior high schools since they are going to be now known as basic schools? Well, let me state that the redefinition of the basic school to include senior high school is almost um, tables for parliament to approve that bill. So we have not actually even got in there yet. Um, as to the point that we are also going to include even senior high schools, we also say that we need to also build the capacity of head, uh, head teachers or headmasters in senior, school, senior high schools. Let me say that we have not even got in there yet. I'm not sure the start of the proposal. The proposal is that basic school, or that is currently, because we define the basic school as the status quo seems to be like today, that is KG to junior high school. So when we get to that level, we will know whether we are supposed to give a, a different nomenclature or if like. So basic schools that are from KG to junior high school are those that are going to benefit from this GPS system. Finally, Mr. Sefwa, when do you expect to roll out this project? We expect or we hope that the next academic year, which is the 2019-2020, if all things being equal, parliament or if you like cabinet, give its approval to the proposal that is going to be given by the Ministry of Education, we should be able to, to roll it out in next academic year. That is this September um, 2019. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Vincent Hasefua is PRO of the Ministry of Education, helping us understand what this Ghana Accountability for Learning Outcome Project, GALOP, is. Uh, we are being told that some 7,000 schools will benefit from it and that 50, not 100, as was stated by the teacher unions will be benefiting from some training given to heads of the schools and it will be done by a non-state, non-for-profit entity. And he explains that they're going to cede some uh, portions of the management of the school and not entirely give out the schools or privatize them as is being suggested by these teacher unions.